Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I couldn't stand to leave the invalid dollar stuff undone, so it is still January 27th for me, and I'm uh, going to try to get one more episode in tonight so that I can see this invalid dollar stuff work, because I think when it does work, it's going to be very cool. And the next batch of stuff is going to be getting it all into the UI, and I have no idea how to do that. So it's kind of fun to be doing something I actually know how to do. Um, well, I think I know how to do it anyway. We'll see how it works out. So uh, we're expecting a bunch of question marks from invalid dollars, but we're not getting it. So that's easily fixed. We'll just go in here to when I said easily, I did mean easily. Okay. And we want them to be equal. So take care of that. I guess it's really just a matter of whether or not it's an instance of uh, invalid dollars. Um, And let's go ahead and say that invalid dollars don't equal anything else. And what do we want for the hash code? We need a prime number. I know, we'll generate it. Oh, thank you very much. All right, there, there are value objects. And you know what, I think this is going to be valuable. Okay. Um, oh, I see. That did not work the way it was supposed to. Okay. Get that going. There we go. So now we've got a value object that's doing what it ought to. What it ought to. Let's go ahead and put it down at the bottom. And now, we need to say a few things about plus. 
Uh, one is which that a plus b invalid a plus invalid b should be invalid. Okay. Um, so that's just easily to fix, easy enough to fix, return new invalid dollars. Now we could make this um, a singleton, but I don't really want to do that, so I'm not going to. Um, it's, it's, you know, why make it a singleton? Well, there's supposed performance benefits from not creating new instances of objects all the time. However, we don't actually have proof that there's a performance benefit, and the way modern virtual machines work is it's sometimes more efficient to create a lot of short-lived objects than to create long-lived objects. So, and it would make the code a little more complicated. So since there's no definitive proof and it would make the code more complicated, we should just leave well enough alone. Minus. Oh wait, I'm not done with plus yet. Um, So something that's invalid plus something that's valid should still be invalid. Something that's valid plus something that's invalid should also be invalid. And here's something tricky. Um, this is not going to work properly. This is going to throw an exception, and that's because the code for this is inside of valid dollars, not invalid dollars. So now you could argue that this test should not be inside of invalid dollars test, it should be inside of valid dollars test because it's testing the code that's going to be part of valid dollars test. Did you catch that? <laughs> Went by a little fast. Um, but I think conceptually it goes along right here. I mean this is really what this is all about. So I'm going to keep the test code here even though the production code is over here. Um, just because that's what feels right. Now, I just need a guard clause here. If dollars is not valid, um, I'm going to return an invalid dollars. Before I do that, though, I think I want to do something else, which is I want to have a new test for a new method called is invalid, which I want to implement on dollars. Now we need to do the same thing for valid dollars. Actually, it should be is valid, shouldn't it? We'll get back to that in a moment. I generally like things be phrased in a positive rather than negative format. Um, so, this is valid. That's going to cause that to pass. This is backwards since I've changed it. There we go. There we go. And now for that. This is going to fail because I haven't actually fixed the problem. I need to put in a um, guard clause pretty much everywhere 
there's no way that I can see um, to short circuit this, so I'm just going to do it. Just going to do it that way. It's a little weird. Actually, you know what? It's a lot weird. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I might come back and do it that way later, but okay, so there's that. Now I can quickly go through, do the rest of them. This is fun code to write because it's so easy. Um, this one should work. This one should fail. That one should work. Next is subtract to zero. By the way, there's an online web comic called minus that's really good. Check it out sometime if you get a chance. Uh, okay, so I just want to do a quick search from place. There we go. That's going to fail on the first line. Yep. Now it should fail inside of valid dollars. Yep. The duplication here with all these guard clauses bothers me, but I don't see another way of doing it. Okay, after subtract to zero comes percentage. This is a little different than the others. but this one isn't. Okay, that's working. That's failing. And that's not working. Oh. Oh. Just under the wire. We're going to get it. Yes. All right. That's it for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. 
I'll catch you next time.